Howdy, how's it going? My name's Davy Chappie, and today it's time to trigger my mild fear of heights because we're gonna be talking about the planes of the multiverse. Originally, I was going to make one big guide talking about those planes that you love so much, but delving into the mysteries of the universe made me realize that there's just too much to talk about for one video. So today's lesson is gonna be on the inner half of the existential map, with the outer planes being tackled in the next video. As always, keep in mind that a lot of this is just my opinion. So if you don't want me to be your flight attendant, feel free to leave a comment down below. But with that out of the way, let's begin. So a plane is best described as a dimension that plays off of the characteristics of our normal world, with our normal world being titled the Material Plane, and all other planes reflecting off of that, embodying one specific aspect of the material world and personifying it into an entire body of existence. In layman's terms, planes are the places where DMs can go to do some crazy shit. There are four basic categories of planes. You've got your inner, which are planes that have a very direct effect both on and received by the Material Plane. You've got your outer planes, which are more tangentially related and further away on the cosmic spectrum. Then there's demi-planes, which are little pocket dimensions that don't have a place on the wheel because they're so abstract and otherwise unimportant, such as the extra-dimensional space inside of a bag of holding, or the demiplane that everything gets teleported to when they're banished, and then there's the transitives, which are planes that act as intermediary voids, with the ethereal plane connecting all of the inner planes, and the astral plane connecting all of the outer planes. Each plane has its own quirks and rules, which we will go over, but the idea that they'll all play off of the material plane is the basic principle that stays true no matter where you are. Now, if the idea of busting into a different dimension, like, yo, what up, isn't completely obvious, going into a different plane is incredibly dangerous and should never, ever, ever be taken lightly. As material beings, our souls naturally belong on the material plane, and prolonged contact with a plane other than our own can and will have pretty immediate consequences to be discovered separately with each plane you go to. But if you do want to go portal hopping like a fat, mute lunatic, your options vary depending on how much access to magic you have. Mages can access portal magic pretty easily, gods can will you to most of them, and for certain planes that are particularly close to the material, sometimes the degrees of separation will just blur in weird places with high concentrations of magic, giving you an accidental portal that may or may not disappear soon after you walk through it. Since all the planes look to the material for their own structure, there will always be some sort of link that can be found with enough digging, as long as you know what to look for. This actually goes double for the worlds of the Feywild and the Shadowfell, since those planes are practically intertwined on such a level with the material realm that the two are considered planar echoes. And so, let's get our spatial spelunking hats on and investigate each inner plane, starting with the Ethereal. So the Ethereal plane is the best place to start because it operates as the never-ending ceaseless void that fills the spaces unfilled by the other inner planes. It is the cream filling of the inner multiverse that connects the material plane and its echoes to the other planes that make up the full inner circle. Visually, traveling through the ethereal plane is like walking down a street through a deep, deep fog, trying not to get yourself lost and wind up in that one shady McDonald's on the east side of town. From the border ethereal, a traveler can see the other plane that they came from, but they aren't able to touch anything, and even gravity stops affecting them, which is how a lot of ghostly type creatures manage to disappear and reappear wherever they want. Deeper into the ethereal plane, one can cross over to a section related to a different part of the inner circle, and from there they can skedaddle to a new plane at their leisure. It's not all wonder and happiness, though. Anything with magic can still bop you while you're in the ethereal plane, and the natural hazard of ether cyclones can slow you down or throw you into a completely different plane at random. But as long as you stay on course and don't get too lost in the spookiness, the ethereal plane can get you where you need to go. Next, we have the four elemental planes of water, earth, fire, and air. Long ago, the four planes lived together in harmony, but then everything stayed exactly the same, but I'm watching you fire people. The elemental planes, as you might expect, represent the raw, untamed essence of each of the four elements, with the air plane uh, embodying openness, inspiration, and movement, fire representing passion, change, and destruction, water representing healing, rhythm, and sympathy, and earth representing rigidness, tradition, and stability. They also physically represent their element to varying degrees based upon how close that part of the plane happens to be to the material world, with closer areas having sprawling cities filled with amazing architecture that represents the perfect blend of the material world infused with whatever element you're in. But then, as you travel further away from the material, you'll eventually end up hitting an entire wall of just pure element. From a wall of water raging too hard to pass through, to a literal sea of constantly erupting volcanoes, to clouds thick enough to eat. The creatures that live in these planes are perfectly representative of them as well, such as the Aarakocra bird people that fly around everywhere until wizards bans them in legal games, or the tritons, fish people, that behave like people, but they're fish. Another interesting thing to note is that despite these planes being ever expansive, they do cross over into each other somehow, which creates little pockets of extraordinary elemental sections, as if the planes got drunk one night and decided to drive right into each other. These 
these places created the new elements of ash from fire and air, magma from earth and fire, ooze from water and earth, and ice from air and water. And inhabitants from the normal elemental planes generally regard these lands as pretty stupid and try to stay away from them whenever possible. But speaking of places that you want to stay away from whenever possible, it's time to talk about the big, overused, and overhyped planes of the multiverse, the Feywild and the Shadowfell. So the two Echo planes represent the strongest aspect of all, emotion, with the Feywild enhancing emotions in a 0 to 100 fashion so that they go from super happy to super pissed to super happy again, all in the time span of like two seconds, and the Shadowfell dampening and stifling emotions so that its inhabitants become muted, jaded, unemotional edgelords that haven't felt what it's like to feel anything but pain in their entire lives. Now, being echoes of the material plane, the Feywild and the Shadowfell have the same physical structure of the material plane, i.e. if a town is raised in the material, a town appears in the same place in the Feywild and the Shadowfell, but morphed to represent their metaphysical aspects. The Shadowfell's version would be more dark and dreary, and the Feywild's would be more, well, wild. The inhabitants of the Shadowfell are dark creatures like the Shadar Kai and other strange dark powers, while the inhabitants of the Feywild are Fey, which is why you should never go there. But if for some reason you want to completely ignore my warnings of fuck Fey and decide to stick your dick in crazy anyway, have fun, because the Feywild is ruled by two factions, the Seelie and Unseelie courts of the Light and Dark Fairies respectively, and both of them want to dick you over the exact amount. And it's no better in the Shadowfell, with the Dark Lords ruling over people and throwing them into their own demi-planes of dread so that they can be torn tortured by their own desires over and over. But at least those guys aren't the FUCKING Fey. Also, the effect of staying in the Shadowfell will give you advanced depression, the likes of which can only be truly understood by retail workers. And as for the Feywild, time just stops working the way it's supposed to, so you could go in for a nice dinner and a chat with some fairies for like an hour, and when you come back out it's two decades later and your son is all grown up and ready to disappoint you with his new career of making D&D videos on YouTube. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like and comment if you did, subscribe if you want to be a cool dude, and maybe support me on Patreon so that I can slowly make my parents regret letting me get into D&D. Also, if you want to stay up to to date in all of your Davy news, I keep a link to my social media in the description below. But yeah, Davy out.